Thank you for joining us for Sustainable House Day 2021. I'm um, here with Monique, Steve, Patrick, and Genevieve over in the corner in their new home. They've just completed and moved in about six months ago, maybe? May. May. Yeah, four months ago. Okay. So we'll start out with asking you guys, how did it all start? Where did the journey start for you guys? And give us a little bit of background about how you found Passive House and in particular where we are today. Wanted to do something that was going to be more environmentally friendly because we're kind of, sort of that way inclined. And we'd had a look at solar passive because that's kind of really all we knew about passive uh -huh. building yep. when we first started looking. Through looking at it, Googling passive solar, found passive house. I had an idea if we built, we built it would be in a city and it's going to be a flat block with nothing on it. So passive solar just seemed like a bit of difficulty. There was no, nothing, going to be nothing there to work with and it, it seems to only cover a few issues in terms of what would um, make the house more efficient in terms of heating and cooling and being comfortable and yeah. and things to live in. Passive house seemed to cover them all in, mm -hmm. in, the, in like an all-inclusive build and, and that's what we wanted. Low energy, comfortable to live in sort of house that also looks good. This house that we're living now stands um, where my grandmother's house used to be, my paternal grandmother. It was very close to, um, because it was very close to my dad and he died, passed away when I was quite young as well and she was quite long lived and I spent a lot of my childhood here with my nan and now um, my mum passed the block on to us so we could support to build our first home and still live sort of in the area that we enjoyed and felt mm. comfortable in. So. Fantastic and yeah. now you got Patrick and Genevieve, fourth generation. That's right. How Patrick's good is that? enjoying tearing up the block just like I used to. <laughs> <laughs> How was the design process for you? Starting off I was as nervous as I thought it was going going to be maybe not hard but just really I was very conflicted because I'm not I think Luke will, <laughs> Luke will pack this up I'm not the kind of person who likes to to launch into criticism too yeah. easily and I think you can't pull too many punches when you're building or designing your house you've got to <laughs> go in and tell them what you want because yeah. no one's going to do it for you all we had to do with Luke having pre like such great knowledge of passive house he knew most of the things and then just had to run it past you and came yeah. back and said what was and wasn't going to work wasn't yeah. design it and then have it reviewed by a passive house and be told oh actually this is not really going to work that's not going to work yeah. we had a good understanding of what passive house was during the design process and that helped us yeah, yeah. make it make it work it was a very collaborative effort because when you say it, Luke, you're referring to Luke Kellett from Kellett Design Group right. and Luke is a certified passive house designer. So as am I as the builder, so you guys had everything you needed in one stop. Was there anything in the design process that surprised you? There was a lot of things I, that, I, that I was surprised that we could do. I thought we'd have to have a lot less, like I wanted lots of windows in the house mm -hmm. and lots of light in and I thought that would, like on certain, certain sides of the house maybe that wouldn't be okay or... Um, and things like that, but it actually all, all worked out fine. So, yeah, all, okay. you know, in certain design elements, I wasn't sure about having the high rate ceilings and whether having like a big open plan like that would be difficult energy efficiency wise to keep heat, heated or cooled. Yeah. Now it all seemed to, mm. to work okay. So, while it's a hot climate, it's quite easy to achieve passive house. We are lucky in that we benefit, we can have more glazing and our orientation is a little bit more forgiving. When we talk about sustainability, I think first thing off the bench, we've got to talk about the fact that it's timber frame house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. Is that something you guys were chasing? Ideally, like the amount of embodied energy with steel or brick yeah. um, and the amount of work that goes into making that was a bit of a no-no. And yeah, any, any way that we can use plants to store carbon is a, yeah. is a good thing for us, to be mm. honest. And, but it was more, I don't know whether you're going to be talking about it, but having it designed and built off-site and yeah. having precise measurements, knowing exactly what you're doing, like limited the amount of waste. You know, obviously it's very hard to be absolutely zero waste, but we yeah. got as close as we, mm. I believe we could. Yeah, so even 90% reduction in waste in this particular home versus a standard timber frame home. Yeah. So pre-manufactured wall panels, pre-manufactured roof trusses. Again, you've reduced carbon by having actual polished concrete on your floors which fantastic finish, it looks great. Yeah. Um, yeah, it feels great as well. Yeah, and it's like when we walked in today, it's absolutely blowing a gale outside today. It's a big storm, but yeah, you've got nice warm floors. It's really comfortable inside the house. It's fantastic. We've got a pre-manufactured timber frame and timber roof, etc. We've got zero thermal bridging here. So Luke will test to, he's done plenty of thermal bridging analysis on this one, but some insulation values. Do you want to go through what you've got here? Or do you want a bit of help with that? Or? Um, we'll get some help with that while yeah. I tackle this. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we've got the obviously the acoustic insulation in between yeah, internal, uh, in, walls. internal walls. In the roof, 
where there's raking ceilings, I think it was R5, R6 elsewhere in yep. the ceilings, and then so R3 in the walls. walls yeah. And then on your northern aspect here, we have some EPS, which pushes up to an R5.7, mm. which is fantastic. Because of that, the amount of glazing you've got on this end, and it being north facing, we're a little bit concerned about that. Even though it's a feature cladding, it looks like fantastic. It's, it has dual function in that it's high performance insulation. No, it looks really good too. With all the insulation that we've got here, and is there any noticeable benefits since you've moved into the house? <laughs> well, but how often have we used the heater? <laughs> yeah. We haven't used the heater much at all. We've okay. used it, I think, twice. Two at, mornings. Yeah, it's really two cold. Two mornings. The, those mornings we had the frost. Laying, oh, yeah. on, laying on the ground, so yeah. it was, must have been pretty cold those mornings, but that was it, and only for, only to wake up, you know, just to, just to take that slight chill out of the air, maybe. Yeah. You've got heat recovery ventilation in here, yes. which is another one of the very important parts of Passive House. Yeah. So coupled with air tightness. No surprises there, when it was happening or how it happened? It's just always nervous to see what the quality of the build is and how, you know, how airtight is airtight. Followed you for a while okay. before we built. Um, but impressed, we've been impressed with how airtight the house is to That's how it's maintaining the mm. temperature with the HRV. Obviously the HRVs, uh, and I've had some friends ask about, oh, would a HRV work if you didn't have the double glazing and things like that? And I was like, it, look, it would work, but it's not gonna work efficiently because your house isn't gonna be airtight. You've gotta build it airtight to have yeah. the HRV work to peak performance. Have you noticed any any differences in, let's say, sound or sleep patterns? or Hard to tell with a new baby and sleep patterns. <laughs> <laughs> Sound, sound, I can't hear anything going on outside. If, no, and you, can't, and you can't really tell that the HRV is doing too no, much. No. It, it's just there, you know it's there, but it, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's just silent and yeah. not noticeable. I haven't noticed any smells actually. The, smell, the, house, the house always smells clean in terms of any sort of cooking. Not that we don't use, we use an extract fan obviously, but cooking or like we've got a scented candle that we have burning sometimes but you, you blow that out and yeah. like as much as you like the smell of a scented candle you can see the air's being flown yeah. through, fresh air's being flown through because the smell doesn't hang around yeah you know? mm. the exchanges which is quickly, also yeah. great when you've got dirty nappies that don't <laughs> <laughs> we did life cycle analysis on this house as well were you guys surprised with that or that was something one of the reasons why you chose to do what you did was that one of the drivers or not we didn't really anticipate it being a yeah. such a a big a big number. A big number, yeah. yeah. Like an 80, 89% reduction in carbon footprint versus a brick home in the same size and the same, built to the same standards in Western Australia. That's huge, an 89% reduction. Yeah. And even at that, like we weren't trying. You know, we no, could have tried a bit harder here and we didn't. We, we just said, look, we want to build it to your specs, to the way you want to build a home. And for that carbon reduction on the life cycle of this house, which was put in at 62 years, that, that's incredible. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think you should pat yourselves on the back for that one. Rainwater harvesting. Yes. Do you want to tell us about that? So we've got two rainwater tanks, uh, five and a half thousand litres between them. One is plumbed up to the laundry and to the powder room, sorry. Yep. Um, so yeah, washing machine is yeah. is drawn directly from, from that. So, yep. so we know that since being in the house, I don't think the rainwater tanks have really been empty. We've been very fortunate to capture a lot, of rain. a lot of rain and so so to know that when we wash our clothes that we're using water that we've just taken from the roof instead of potentially taking it from dams or groundwater sources yeah. or even desalination plants in in perth yeah well that's that's just a, a positive did you guys make the decision to to run your rainwater harvesting through to the hot water heater as well so you've got a, a stable electron hot water heat pump I think it is plumbed into the, the hot water system. Yeah, I'm pretty too. sure it is yeah. with a switchover valve. So again, that's, in, in my opinion, that's one of the best uses of, of harvested rainwater. None of our washing's coming out of the mains, none of the toilets yeah. are being flushed with the mains, and yeah, none of the showers are And then we, we do use the water in the, water garden, in the garden, and, and, and yeah. yeah. Especially so. all the new natives that haven't, <laughs> are having some nice rainwater instead. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of time and effort you guys have put in here to, to get sustainability and to do it correctly and properly, I have to commend you on that because you guys have a solar system. Yes. And quite a good one. Yeah, we've got a 6.6 .6 kilowatt solar system with a 9 kilowatt battery system too. We pretty much in the evenings run off our battery and recharge during the day. We make a lot more than we 
yeah. we actually use, which is which is great. Yeah, okay. um, so we are seeing the benefits already. Already. So you've only been here for four months or so. So yep. it'd be really good to get some numbers on that after a calendar year. Mm. Yeah, See definitely. Exactly how we yeah. work out. Summertime, it's just going to be a boon with mm. extra daylights, and it means that if we do need to to run air conditioner for heating or cooling, we know that we're probably using power we've already generated yeah. as opposed to okay. taking yeah. it from the grid. So that's right. So, so yeah. it's free basically from Yeah, the well that's it. Yeah. I see some native plants out there. There's a lot of mulch out there. Yeah, working so. on, on the outside. The front is finally done. All my little natives are we're caringly planted by hand by me, so I feel very impressed about yeah. our front front garden and front verge that'll be a little nice wide nature strip. So to you by email, I'm waiting for it to kind of spring into life when the seasons change and yeah. then it all comes yep. together. And then planting the back up with some fruit trees and and veggie patches and things like that all. Yeah. And I'm a carpenter by trade, so I love natural timbers. And your deck out the front and out the back, I have to say, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. There's a lot of people going for the composite now because it's maintenance free, etc. Yeah. So I really, really commend you on that choice. Yeah. Like another very good carbon footprint choice. Yeah. Even though it's not in right now, it's not in the analysis there, that would help your build again. I love it. I think we need somewhere to sit further up the back so we can find the back of the house <laughs> sitting under it. If you had to do it again, mm -hmm. what would you do differently? Extend the al fresco actually mm. a little bit more <laughs> more space uh more space but it's it's also a bit more protection from um rain i think it's just the southwest oh, yeah, I think it's orientation yeah. yeah we're very happy with how it's turned up yeah it's, anything of the build really no i'd actually i'd love if you know we don't we're not looking in a position that we can or are really looking to be bothered to build again but it's made me excited that if I had endless finances I'd be excited to do to be able to get yeah. to design something again and build something again just to see how it turn out and how that performs yeah, and things okay. like that. I'm excited it, by it's a bit of now, bit of so. bit of competition. Yeah, yeah right. Competition it. with yourself. So it would be cool to be able to do that but we're not gonna be able to gonna Yeah, push push the envelope again yeah. and yeah. then try yeah. and try and see do something do. unique and Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, there's a lot of good designs down out there with the ice mark through various um, architects, so yeah. it'd be nice to contribute a couple. Mm. <laughs> well, we've have had a couple of people ask about your floor plan, so oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it, we might get a repeat. Okay. You never know. <laughs> so um, I think on that note, I have to say a huge thank you to you guys um, and to everyone back home. A huge thank you to Monique, Steve, Genevieve, and Patrick, wherever he is. <laughs> yep, and uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, hope you enjoy uh, Sustainable House Day 2021. Um, have a great day and let us know what you think. <laughs>